Welcome to the Fibromyalgia Podcast with me, Health and Wellness Editor, Verity Clark. Fibromyalgia is a chronic pain condition which goes largely undiagnosed and for which there is currently no cure. Yet in the UK alone, it is estimated that around 1.5 million people are sufferers. Poor diagnosis and zero cure means suffering and silence is a common theme in the chronic pain community. Created in conjunction with the Fibromyalgia magazine, this podcast aims to break this silence because we believe that the more we share, the more ways we will discover for fibromyalgia sufferers to lead happier, healthier lives. We'll be covering and oversharing everything you ever wanted to ask about fibromyalgia, but didn't know who or where to turn to, with conversations with some of the most interesting and thought-leading people, both within as well as outside of the fibromyalgia space, to give you information, insight and inspiration for diagnosing and coping with fibromyalgia. Because even though something is invisible, that doesn't mean it should be kept in the dark. I'm joined this week by Courtney, a social media star whose bio reads style, daily life, beauty and fibro warrior. Diagnosed with fibro at the beginning of 2020, Courtney has been navigating learning to live with a chronic condition as a young woman learning to live with a chronic condition during a global pandemic, and learning how to build up her career as a social media influencer, whose seemingly glamorous life is peppered with a background of fibro flare-ups. She joins me to talk about sharing her story publicly, dealing with brands trying to monetize your condition, and what really influences her as an influencer. Courtney, hi, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? I'm well, thank you. We found a, a time that suits us both because you're based in America and I'm in the UK. Yes. <laughs> um, it's so great to have you on the podcast. I came across you on Instagram where you share your love of fashion and beauty as well as documenting some of your fibromyalgia journey. And so I was super interested to talk to you about being a young woman, sharing her life on social media, but through the lens of a chronic condition. So firstly, we like to kind of start by getting some background from our guests. So would you mind sharing with us a little bit about your own fibro journey? Sure. Um, so my journey started, I want to say in January of 2020. It was like right before to like right before 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, so but I've always struggled my whole life with random aches and pains and um, that I was able to easily manage. Um, there was never a problem. So I never, you know, went to the doctors or anything for it. Um, I guess when it got really bad was when it started to interfere with certain aspects of my life, like, um, my daily yoga routine, um, you know, just the fatigue was awful getting up in the morning. Um, it was interfering with my daily, activities and my work and Mm -hmm. my job so once it started to affect me mentally and physically at my job it was it was a definite sign that I needed to get the help and figure out what was going on yeah yes so um going forward from there um I actually went to the ER with unexplained pain in my arms and um it was really concerning that's actually been a main symptom for me. I don't know if it's just the, the joints really achy, but, uh, that's the main symptom. Um, and then after the ER and some tests, lots of tests, blood work, everything, (laughs) um, finally was able to see a rheumatologist and she was the one who diagnosed me with fibromyalgia. Right. So that was quite a quick diagnosis because lots of people, you know, it can take years and years and years before they hear the words fibromyalgia. Yeah, and I think I think it was because all of, like, I went through so many tests, like blood tests, um, I've had MRIs done, I've had just x-rays and nothing, everything was coming back normal, everything was coming back yeah. fine, nothing, nothing is showing a, a specific reason why I'm in pain or why I'm dealing with the chronic fatigue so I think they just kind of categorized it as fibromyalgia because it has such a wide range of symptoms yeah. 
It's and, really hard to just pinpoint. <laughs> yeah. And had you heard of fibromyalgia before you got diagnosed with it? I didn't actually. Um, I mean, I've heard of, you know, like I thought I had MS. Um, I thought my symptoms were correlating with MS, but my MRI showed different. So I'm perfectly normal mm-hmm. in the sense of, you know, scientific <laughs> physic reasons, but um I, I guess like after I was diagnosed was when I really started doing the research and um figuring out what fibromyalgia really was. Um because I really didn't have an idea <laughs> before. And it's such a vast kind of subject to get your to get your head around. So it's mm-hmm. it's a fairly recent diagnosis. So about a year you've kind of been dealing with understanding that you have a chronic illness and it also coincided with a global pandemic and lockdown so how did you kind of juggle the two coming to terms with having a chronic condition and also life changing because we are in this whole new world I know so I basically really didn't have much of a choice in the sense of like (laughs) how to deal with it but um it's been it's, and I'm thankful that I was able to actually see the doctors in person before everything kind of shut down, like the hospitals and stuff. Um, so, and I was able to have like my mom with me, um, to support me. And like, now you can't have anybody with you. So if anything, like if I have an emergency situation, it would be like really scary. But before, before all of this, um, I'm just thankful that I was able to see somebody. Um, but as time went on and I had to go get testing done, that's when I had to see everyone virtually. Yeah. (laughs) So that was different. (laughs) Um, that was very different and that was difficult because you can't really get a relationship with a doctor. Mm. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. You can't really, um, you know, talk to them about your whole life problem, like your whole um, wide range of symptoms without them actually seeing you. Yeah, and I suppose it's probably easier to kind of mask your symptoms on the screen, you know, they won't be able to physically see whether you're seeming more tired than the last time they saw you or whatever. Right, exactly. So I think for them, it's harder. It's, It's definitely a challenge. Um, working or like working with them through this pandemic and trying to figure out treatments and stuff like that and you um mentioned that you had taken your mom with you to the appointments how have your friends and family generally taken the news have you felt like you've had to tell them or because you haven't really been seeing as many people due to lockdown have you kind of hidden it from them or what's that kind of reaction been um well Actually, they've been really supportive. Um, I think they're more so just trying to find an answer like I am. So they're just really concerned. Um, Everyone's been there for me. I haven't really had any problems. I mean, mostly it would just be um, people that you know that don't work well now with yours. I guess I should say your life now because it is like a total lifestyle change so Mm -hmm. things that you used to do before that people were used to doing with you like going out or having a good time or I mean I'm still able to do those things but um I definitely can't hang anymore (laughs) (laughs) Um, I can't I can't stay up as late as I want to um and I think more so it just I think it bothers me more because I want to be there. I want to experience the fun and hang out with everyone. And I think I just feel bad at the end of the day more so. Yeah. But everyone's pretty much there for me and supportive. And that's been really nice. That's good to hear. And I guess, as you say, it's kind of a good a good test for people that are not, shouldn't be in your life anyway, if they right. don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you definitely don't want to deal with the toxic people when you're going through stuff like that because it's totally. like strain on you <laughs> yeah, yeah. You to think about yourself and how are you feeling about um life going back to normal when your life has actually changed quite irrevocably um I think once it goes back to normal I mean 
pretty much has been going back to normal, but in the sense of actually going out to dinner, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't really do much else, but I mean, um, I've been trying to get myself up and, um, just trying to get back into a normal routine again and um, seeing my family, which has been really nice because I haven't been able to, but. Um, Cross yeah. that bridge when, when you come to it. Um, so as yeah. well as, <laughs> as well as coinciding with um, the global pandemic, your diagnosis also kind of coincided with a bit of a, a conscious decision to become more active on social media. Is this something that you had been thinking about doing anyway, or did your diagnosis kind of give you the the oomph to really go for it? Um, it definitely gave me the push to do it. Um, I'm still pretty new to the social media scene. Um, I've only I really started um, in this the end of the summer, um, but it was definitely what I started with. Like that was kind of like my focus of my page um but then it's I wanted to expand it into like my life so I'm 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 trying to have like a closer look like so people can see a closer look of my life dealing with the fibromyalgia and um um getting a sense of like how I guess like I <laughs> like how I'm treating it um, like how, what helps me is like Instagram is sort of like an outlet for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I share basically, and I obviously want to share my story. Um, but I also want to share the products that I use that help with certain symptoms. Um, I love to share like my fashion, the styles, um, um, and I guess my vision is just to create a space for people to, have an outlet for themselves as well. Like if they have any questions, they should feel comfortable um, asking me or, uh, cause that's kind of where I started to. Um, my diagnosis led me to Instagram for yeah. more answers. And there's just a huge community of people there that support you. And it definitely gave me the push to want to open myself up more to social media. That's really interesting that you say that you're actually going to start sharing more about your fibro journey because, so your Instagram handle is Courtney Coco Mel. And um, yeah, I suppose from like first glance and even your bio says that you're, it's like a snapshot of your style and your daily life and beauty and kind of the fibro stuff is a bit secondary at the moment, isn't it? Um, Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting that actually you're saying, you know, you've discovered that it is a positive place for this community to grow what kind of um what things do you post that you get the most kind of questions about um I actually get a lot of questions about how how it started like what um what what caused me or what signaled me to take the initiative to go to the doctor um And I want to say, like, it was definitely the fatigue, like the fatigue was so bad. And I do get a lot of like questions or people will reach out and ask, um, you know, where is your main, like your pain Mm -hmm. or like, just, just so they, I think they want to feel that, you know, somebody else is experiencing it and like, they're not crazy because that's how I felt. Like I felt crazy. And so I think it also helps like me to feel good, like to validate that they're actually going through something and to actually go and get the help that they need. So, um, that yeah. feels good. And I definitely, um, I definitely want to open it up more. Like I know it's just like a snapshot, but I have some things in the works too. Like I have a website that I'm building right now. Um, that also will have more information about fibromyalgia and stuff like that too. So that's exciting. Yeah. And I suppose because you're kind of fairly early on in your, in living with fibromyalgia, people can really kind of like come along with you, like from the start right. and going through all the different things that you're that you're trying and that's working and that's not working. Um, right. So how do you actually kind of navigate using it when you're super fatigued or when you are having a flare up? 
So I am, so I'm really before Instagram, I wasn't like a strict schedule person, but now that I'm into it, I'm finding that like I have to schedule myself because if I don't, I get really overwhelmed. Um, and I feel the symptoms start to hit me pretty quick. So I pace myself. Um, I only do scheduled posts um, or I'll take pictures, um, content throughout the week or once a, like once or twice a week. Mm-hmm. And then I just kind of post throughout the week. Um, but I definitely feel like there's a lot of pressure on you to not take time off of Instagram do you wow already yeah like I it's it's very competitive I've learned but it's also like supportive competitive it's not like it's like it's like you have to just pace yourself and I learned that it's okay to pace yourself and not try to you know do too much because if you do then you just find yourself really overwhelmed and um I definitely have to take a step back sometimes. (laughs) And when you say competitive, is that kind of between the other fibro warriors on social media? No, I would say more so like the the beauty side of the beauty fashion side, but it's not so like competitive in like a mean way. It's it's competitive in a sense that it's a marketing, um, it's almost like you're monetizing your your instagram basically so yeah. it's like you want to keep up with instagram's algorithms and like all that stuff to make sure oh, it's ever changing yeah yeah everything's ever changing so you just want to make sure you're on your a game and sometimes it can get overwhelming um but sometimes i don't even know how these girls do it <laughs> like there's they're really they're really really driven so it's it's cool to watch and be a part of yeah for sure and so for you personally then how does having an active presence on social media help you deal with having fibromyalgia um it helps um in the outlet sense of like being able to help other people I guess like being able to reach other people or have someone follow my journey um even if it's still new um I think that's what drives me to keep going and to want to like open up more. And, um, the opening up is like really healing. So, um, that's really helped me just talking about it and creating a space to just have an outlet of letting things go, I guess. Yeah. And I guess knowing that the people that are consuming your content understand what you're going through maybe better than your your friends and family do because they're going through a a similar thing too um you spoke about pressure in terms of scheduling but Mm -hmm. do you feel any pressure about being this kind of advocate this kind of public facing advocate for fibromyalgia you know that you have to get everything medically correct or that you might not help somebody or (laughs) is there any pressures like that Yeah, actually, it's like a yes and no type of answer. Like, I definitely feel the pressure of making sure that everything that I'm that I'm putting out there is is correct. And I guess I just want to make sure that my knowledge and my research that I'm doing is isn't going to steer someone in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I would hate to, like, have someone feel that they just have fibromyalgia, but really something else is going on or, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't want to confuse anyone. And I just, my hopes is that I just can continue to keep learning about it and putting that knowledge out there instead of anything false or, um, yeah. And I guess it's about sharing your, your personal experience is only going to be like the truth that you know. So right, exactly. And and it, everyone's symptoms are so different. Mm-hmm. It's, it could be anything. So it's just so, such a, a wide, broad diagnosis. It's just anything goes, really. In terms of anything going, then, you obviously have to make yourself quite vulnerable on yeah. social media when you're choosing you know, to reveal private parts of your life. Do you have your own kind of 
filter that you say, yep, I'm happy to share that, or no, I'm not happy to share that? How do you kind of pick and choose? Um, that's a good question. Um, the vulnerability has really opened me up in the sense of, um, if I didn't have the vulnerability, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it's, it's like a good thing in a way because it's like, it teaches you a lot. It's like a really good healing tool. Um, it's, it's silly, <laughs> but in my experience, it's definitely helped out, like get the word across and um, the awareness out there. Um, Cause it, the vulnerability is something that I've always kept hidden to myself. And now that I'm opening up more, it's, it's, it's definitely giving me a better mental <laughs> understanding of who I am and um, I'm not just a victim of fibromyalgia. Like I'm more of that. You know, 100%. That <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting because I suppose if you weren't vulnerable at all and didn't share anything at all, then yeah, you wouldn't have this platform. So you kind of, mm -hmm. you have to open up to get that kind of reward. Yeah, and I think it just makes it, I just think it, it just makes everything that much more raw and like like real and open and where people can go to share their own thoughts and stuff too. And so kind of on the flip side, you spoke a little bit about um, monetizing and you're kind of dealing with that and finding that kind of a bit tricky to get your head around. So in terms of brand collaborations then, do you get brands coming to you kind of trying to make money out of your condition by being like, hey, we're a, I don't know, sleep spray that promises to help fibro and you kind of have to be able to decipher what is actually true and what's not. How do you kind of choose who you partner with? Oh my gosh. So it's actually, I'm really glad that you asked that question because I do, I do get a lot of, of weird <laughs> requests like that or uh, people who try to sell supplements. Um, yeah. Well, people who just like, they say they're for something and then you can't trust it, you really can't. So when when I was monetized, like when I started monetizing my page with, like, and, and it came out with the fibro first, I did get a lot of those, um, you sleep better with this or, yeah. you know, and I did, I, I do, I did do one, collaboration with some sleep and actually they they really helped my sleeping um uh, but i don't i haven't taken any other um collaboration requests from people who try to get you to like ingest something mm -hmm. or like a supplement i always have to run it by my doctor oh really that's interesting doctor. so you make sure everything's I, kind I of just, i i even know if it's if they say it's okay i just never i always I'm so worried about what I'm consuming or what I'm putting in my body. I just don't want to make it worse or the fibro flares up or something. And um, Oh, that's, so, such a, that's such a good way of doing it, actually getting your doctor to give the yes or the no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, in the sense of um, collaborating, I, I mostly will – choose not to go with something that like a like a supplement or a vitamin or um I like to get my doctor's input first um and then if I choose to I'll go ahead but definitely make sure you do your research before yeah um, any type of person who comes along saying they have a cure for anything is not really true <laughs> yeah always run at the party doctor first okay let's talk about um beauty and that kind of side of things because you're super interested in that anyway and you're kind of merging these two worlds of beauty and having a chronic illness which obviously don't have to be mutually exclusive at all um but for you personally did you have you found like since you've had fibro that you've had to make any adaptations to your beauty routine or are there any things that you find are really soothing in terms of how they help you mentally or just help your skin or what kind of changes have you noticed? Um, I definitely, my skin has changed the most. I, it's, it's really weird. Um, I have really sensitive skin now, like anything like sunlight, um, 
even if I get like too little sleep or if, you know, it just, it flares up, I'll get inflammation, redness, dryness, the whole works. I'm sure everyone right. goes through it, but, um, when it really flares up, it's, it really is a problem. Um, so there's so a definite correlation. There, yeah. So I definitely try to find things that help with, you know, itchiness, redness, sensitivity, um, there's days where I don't put anything on at all because mm-hmm. I just I get itchy. I get really itchy. <laughs> um, there's fibro for you, um, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things I've had to change. Um, I've had to change, um, cleansers, skincare, um, lotions, um, just, basically anything that won't flare up my skin it's like trial and error with everything now um so you're you're always looking for things that are good for sensitive skin calming for skin yes and I was such like a beauty product junkie before this like I was always trying everything and anything and now it's just whatever works (laughs) (laughs) so you're still a product junkie but just different products Right, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything specific that you found that has just been amazing? So, I really love, I don't know, the jade facial rollers. Oh, the yeah. The ones that, like, you, you put them in the fridge. I use on every day. And you roll them on. Oh, yes, yeah, so, like, those work so well. Um, that helps with the puffiness, too, around my eyes. Um, I'm sure it helps every everyone in the morning too but <laughs> or every woman in the morning I love um anything with aloe in it it helps the sensitivity yeah um and then so oh, I choose moisturizers that have SPF in it too um because the sunlight really irritates my skin now um and yeah I I just love my jade roller <laughs> my facial roller that's like one thing that I love. Number one beauty <laughs> tip. Um, and you spoke a bit about um, supplements and vitamins and not taking um, brand partnerships with them really. But have you, in your personal life, how do you kind of help yourself stay healthy daily? So in terms of supplements, I do take a whole bunch of them. I just get them approved first. Um, so I take a lot of uh, B vitamins. Um, those are good for like your nervous system. Um, in a lot of the research that I've done on fibromyalgia, it, it extends from your nervous system. So I try to take B12, um, things that help with the nervous system. I also need, of course, my energy. So I take vitamin C, um, I take collagen products, of course, but those also have like joint supplements in them as well, depending on what you're getting. My biotin, um, just overall, um, turmeric, actually, if I'm saying that right, turmeric, uh, that is for inflammation <laughs> yeah. um, and pain. That actually, <laughs> that actually um, really helps me. And then CBD oil, I use the roll-ons too oh do you use a lot I use a lot (laughs) what do you use the CBD for for your sleep the CBD I use for the like pain Mm -hmm. um so I use the roll-on CBD for if I'm feeling like I get a lot of pain in my shoulder and like my joints and my arms so I'll roll that on when when I'm feeling it pretty bad that day um and then I also have, um, there's a company called Blush that uses CBD. Um, and it, they also have like scents too. So like lavender scent really helps calm me down. Um, and those are really nice to have when I'm feeling icky that day. Yeah. So you've kind of got your, your own wardrobe of su- supplements and vitamins to help yeah. you through the, help you through the day. And um, yeah. where do you find out about? trying new things like are you influenced by other influencers sometimes um I if they recommend something I will definitely look into it um I'm 
I'm trying to do more research on it because I don't like prescription drugs and um, I've always tried to do the more natural route of things, mm-hmm. but sometimes you definitely need a doctor's foot um, if it's really bad. Um, luckily, I've been able to manage my pain um, in, a, in a way that's healthy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's different, but um, I definitely research a lot. <laughs> that's where I get most of my um, my. My, the internet is my thing with... Internet is your oyster. But, um, um, okay, I want to end then by talking <laughs> a bit about... Um, your page is probably predominantly fashion. And this is probably going to be a really silly question, but mm-hmm. I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> have you had to kind of like change your style at all, having fibro? Because, you know, if you're in a lot of pain, are things uncomfortable to wear? So you've had to kind of look for looser styles or different materials. Like, as somebody who fashion is a big part of their life, has that kind of had an effect? My dog, hold on, my dog's barking, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, come here. Oh. I'm so sorry. God, don't worry at all. Come here. Somebody dropped a package off, so he's... He's excited. He's in protective mode. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, that is not a silly question. It's actually... Are you able to edit that? Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Anyways, back to the question. It's not a silly question. Actually, yes. (laughs) Really wants to know what that Um, package is. I have had it. He is like, what is happening? (laughs) Buddy, sit down. I know. Lay down. I have definitely had to change my style. Um, so like I said, I, I schedule my posts. So if I'm collaborating with, um, a certain brand or, um, um, if I have a clothing brand that I'm collaborating with, I will post on the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, my internet's going down now. Oh, everything okay? Okay. We should be good. Are good? Yeah. Let's, should we start that question again? Okay. <laughs> okay. So this might be a silly question, but obviously your page is predominantly fashion. So I was wondering whether since you've had fibro, you've actually had to change your own style due to clothing being uncomfortable because you're in pain or you feel more comfortable wearing looser styles as there. For somebody that's really interested in fashion and it's a big part of your life, have it has it been have you had to kind of navigate a new way now that you've got fiber? Yes, and that's not a silly question at all. Um I guess it depends on the day on the day. So like I said, I schedule my posts. Um so if I'm feeling like that day is a good day and I'm ready to take on the day, I will you know, do my more glam posts, I guess, like I'll do my makeup and I'll put on, you know, the dresses or um, whatever. But if I'm having a more, if I'm having a flare up day or if I'm not feeling the best, I usually choose to not do any, like take any content that day. Um, I just give myself a day off. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on how I'm feeling. Um, I do love to live in my pajamas though. So (laughs) Don't we all? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in the sense of changing, it just really depends on the day and how how active the symptoms are that day. Well, Courtney, thank you so much for talking to me. I think you're doing such a brilliant job on your social media page. So for anybody who's listening and wants to give Courtney a follow, it's at Courtney Coco Mel on Instagram. And is there anything that you'd like to share with anybody as a as a lasting note? Any words of encouragement or what they can find on your page? 
Oh, thank you. Um, actually, just be yourself. <laughs> um, that's honestly just you know what's best for you and your health. So if you feel you need to reach out to a doctor, no matter what, you should take charge of that. And um, you're always validated. And if you ever need any sort of comfort or advice or anything, you can always come to my page. So in my hopes of reaching anybody, um, I just hope that it helps anyone if they have any questions or anything. It definitely will. You're building a gorgeous community. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. The content on this podcast is for informational purposes only. And because each person is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions.